Hello Internet, welcome to another tutorial in the series of Network Analysis and Synthesis. Today we'll discuss Superposition Theorem in ACs. Please understand Superposition Theorem in AC is no different from Superposition Theorem in DC, except for the fact that you'll see all these scary impedances scattered all over the network. But you'll need to do uh, you need to deal with all these impedances in the same way you de dealt with the resistances in solving a network using superposition theorem in DC. So I have taken up a very very simple example uh, of an AC circuit that we will solve to find uh, the current in certain branch and I've got this question where I've been asked to find the current through J3 ohm inductive reactants and that would be this branch so I'll need to cur find current in this branch I do not know the probable direction of the current in this branch but let us say it is going in this direction. Mm. Now, just like uh, the steps of superposition theorem in DC will follow the same steps and will treat um, the impedances of the branches as resistances of the branches in solving uh, the numerical and in order to solve complex numbers I'll take help of this calculator 991ES um, this is perhaps my favorite calculator in solving complex computations and I've made a series of videos as to how you can use this calculator to ease your life uh, I highly recommend that you watch those videos too uh, but in case you have not seen those videos I'll uh, I'll give you a brief introduction as to how you can use it in this one also. So, uh, first things first, in superposition theorem, we we calculate current in the specific branch by keeping one source at a time, and then we find the uh, current in the branch, courtesy one source, courtesy second source, and then we finally add those currents or subtract them depending upon their direction so that would be an algebraic sum <coughs> the first thing that we will notice in this circuit is that it has two sources so we'll need to perform two calculations uh, we'll need to find the current in J3 ohm branch when 5 angle 30 volt source is present so by the definition of superposition theorem we'll keep one source at one point in time we'll eliminate all the other sources and the rules of elimination of all the other sources are pretty simple um, that is discussed in the basics of superposition tutorial also will will short circuit the voltage sources all the other voltage sources and will open the will keep the open circuit current sources but we do not have a current source here so the other voltage source which is this one will be short circuited when I'll uh, choose to select this one in the network so I'm left with this circuit now and it is immaterial to draw this branch now because I'm going to anyway short the branch parallel to this so when I'll short this branch this J ohm uh, J5 ohm impedance branch will go away anyway because um, I have a shorted path in parallel 
so my circuit has reduced reduced itself to a very simple circuit where I have a voltage source connected to two parallel uh, impedances and I am concerned about finding I2 let me say this as I1 and I am concerned about finding I2 the reason is pretty simple because I2 is the one which will flow from J3 ohm branch eventually and how can we find I2 we can we can simply find I2 by the voltage upon and the total impedance in this branch is minus J5 ohm plus J3 ohm so I'm left with 5 angle 30 upon minus J2 ohm. so this is the, the current in this branch is pretty simple to find because uh, the voltage across these two points is 5 angle 30 and the total impedance is this so voltage upon impedance is what the formula is to find I2 and I'll, I'll rather name it as I, I2 dash I1 dash and I2 dash because we'll find I2 double dash in the other case <coughs> now this can be calculated using this calculator we'll go to mode we'll turn the calculator on go to mode and select 2 to go into complex mode then we'll say 5 uh, it's always better to put everything in brackets I'll use 5 angle 30 divided by minus 2 iota which gives me this value but I'll want to convert this into polar form so I get 2.5 angle 120 degrees ampere so the direction of this current would be in this uh, direction or it is flowing in the west direction I would say so half, half the work is done then we'll need to find the current using uh, or by keeping 10 angle 60 voltage source in the circuit I'll remove the 5 angle 30 and the circuit will reduce itself to again a very simple circuit with two branches in parallel with the voltage source uh, I'll not draw the branch which will eventually go away because of this short circuiting of voltage source so I'm left with minus J5 ohm and J3 ohm over here and this current will be labeled as I2 double dash and this one will be labeled as I1 double dash to find I2 double dash we'll simply divide the voltage by uh, the impedance of this branch which is minus J5 plus J3 ohm and that gives me 10 angle 60 divided by minus J2 and I'll again use calculator for this 10 10 angle 60 divided by J2 and by the way J2 will be written as minus 2 iota iota sign is just above English and I get oh I 
easy is to text me and see. So this is the value, but I would need this value in polar form. So I'll say 5 angle 150 degrees and this will go in the east direction and my total current will become total I which I want to find this one will be um, I2 dash minus I2 double dash so it will be 25 angle 120 minus 5 angle 150 and again I'll need to take help of the calculator so 25 angle 120 minus now you can see otherwise the direct subtraction of polar form is not possible uh, but in calculator we can do it So the net current is three ohms, three point one ohms, and angle is six point two with a negative sign. Well, that's how you can you can find current in superposition theorem in any particular branch uh, if the network is an alternating current network and I hope this quick tutorial was helpful and if it helped please uh, consider subscribing to the channel you have a great day ahead bye